Hello everyone and welcome. It's Donald Parker from CyberSec Study. This is episode number four of the Intro to Cyber program. And again, this program is geared towards folks that are uh, new to the field, looking to break in, or for for people who are already in the field who just um, you know want some suggestions or techniques that they can use uh, on the job. So this episode, we're going to talk about cloud computing. All right, and we'll start with um, the term virtualization. So virtualization. Um, when I think of that word, I think of um, two terms come to mind, bare metal and, and hosted. Okay, but first of all, virtualization, in my opinion, is w- one of the greatest inventions in computing in, in probably a couple of decades. One of the greatest of, of, of all time, quite frankly. Um, if you think of... Uh, Before virtualization, we were building uh, hardware, computing hardware, and in accordance with uh, Moore's law, processing power was was doubling every, what was it, 18 months or so. So the the hardware kept getting uh, stronger, more powerful, more capable, so that we could build better applications and operating systems that can do better things. But what we were realizing is that with all this powerful hardware and just one operating system installed on it, that that the, those computing resources really weren't being utilized, probably 20, 10 to 20% of that um, system's physical hardware resources were being utilized most of the time. So with virtualization, instead of having just one operating system on one physical server, you could have five to 10 operating systems running on one physical server all at the same time, as if they were uh, five or 10 different computing devices. And that's really, that's, that's the game changer right there. That, that is what makes cloud computing undeniable, right? It, the, the, the cost benefits, the financial benefits of, of not having so much space being taken up by 10 physical devices that you can now fit on one device, uh, that, that's unmistakable and undeniable. So virtualization is not the cloud, but it's the engine that drives the cloud. We wouldn't have cloud computing the way we do now without virtualization, but you don't need to have a cloud environment in order to use virtualization. I've got a, a lab here in my basement and I virtualize. I've got three desktop computers and I can virtualize Kali Linux and just about any uh, type of system, three or four systems running on, on one physical box at a time. So with virtualization, I mentioned the word bare metal. So if you think of when you turn a computer on the power comes on. The first thing that um, that the computer looks at is the BIOS, right? System BIOS, a small piece of code that's hard coded, tells the computer what to do. You know, go look at the CD-ROM drive for instructions. Go look at the hard drive for instructions, uh, or go look at a USB port or drive for for instructions. That BIOS. Um, Again, like it's like I said, it could point you to the operating system, and then the operating system has, uh, or the hard drive has instructions that um, uh, re- that makes the operating system start running. With bare metal virtualization, you can have the system boot up to the BIOS, and then the BIOS could point to the virtualization software, which is just another small piece of code, just like the BIOS, and that virtualization that bare metal um, um, virtualization, we call it a hypervisor. That hypervisor um, is where you would configure and install, um, I probably wouldn't say install, but it's where you would manage your virtual images. So you wouldn't need to have an operating system installed on that physical device. You just have your hypervisor 
system boots up to the hypervisor. Hypervisor has, you know, maybe 10 different operating systems configured on it, and you can run one or more operating system um, directly from the, from the hypervisor. So that's bare metal. The other type of virtualization is, um, is what we call hosted. So you turn on the computer, it boots up to the BIOS, the BIOS points to the hard drive, the hard drive um, runs the operating system, starts the operating system, and then you have a virtualization um, uh, software application installed on the operating system, and you can manage your, your virtual images from that. All right, so uh, virtualization is, is, uh, is the key, it's the key to it all. Next term, um, it's just cloud computing in general. You know, uh, when I think of cloud computing, that term, I think of um, I think of it from the perspective of an individual or a corporation. So, as an individual, we all use uh, Gmail, uh, Yahoo Mail. We use Dropbox. Those are all cloud services that are offered to us as individuals where um, I don't have to have a, a mail client or a mail server installed in my home that I, that I manage my, my email service from. I just connect via the internet to their service where they have servers installed and, uh, and everything is run from there. From a corporate perspective, I could have um, you know, if I'm a kite making corporation and we're really good at making kites, we're probably not very good at managing servers. So I got to hire folks to do all that for me. I have to reserve uh, space in my building for servers and routers and switches and all that crap for communications. I got to have higher engineers and folks to, to manage all that for me. Um, I need a cooling system. I need security guards to protect all that mess. Um, and then I can run my business from that. Or with cloud computing from a corporate perspective, I get rid of all that. Use that space to make, you know, for more tables to build more kites, <laughs> right? And then hire a third party like Amazon Web Services to uh, host those servers and all that um, computing functionality for me. All right, so you think of cloud computing, think of it from the perspective of an individual or a corporation. And then the next two terms, um, in any cloud relationship, whether it's for an individual or a corporation, you're gonna have a cloud provider and a cloud consumer. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, me, it, with my Gmail account, I am the cloud consumer and Google is the cloud provider. For my company, um, we get rid of our server room, we get rid of our server farm, we are the cloud consumer, Amazon Web Services or Carpathia or uh, Microsoft Azure, they can be the cloud provider. Um, next important thing to talk about with respect to the cloud is um, our cloud essential characteristics. So these are things that a cloud environment, some of the characteristics that they should have, maybe not have all of them, but um, these are just some examples. Um, and the first one is on-demand self-service, right? So if I'm a corporate cloud consumer, AWS is my cloud provider, I should have uh, the ability to connect to that environment on-demand self-service, I shouldn't have to call AWS, I shouldn't have to connect to somebody to be able to um, connect to my servers and, and administer them or do anything with them. On-demand self-service. Another characteristic is broad network access. Because this is these services are accessible through the internet, I should be able to connect through my PDA, through my uh, laptop, my tablet, my cell phone, um, just about any type of computing device. Next topic is resource pooling. And I think this is the, a term that scares a lot of people away from cloud computing. 
Um, and that's where, um, you know, you could have multiple customers in a cloud environment, uh, all sharing computing services. They're all connected to um, an environment that has a bunch of servers that are all connected to each other that are all connected by routers and switches that are all connected to each other. And all those resources are pulled. Next term is rapid elasticity. Um, just like with on-demand self-service, I should be, be able to connect to my environment. And if I only have 10 servers allocated, I should be able to rapidly expand to 20, you know, or, or uh, compress back to 10 whenever I need to. And then finally, um, a measured service um, in cloud computing. That is the, the, the device that, um, or the, the method or the metric that allows you to measure how much of the service you're using so that you're only paying for what you use. So theoretically, it should be a, a whole lot cheaper to use cloud services because you're only paying for what you use. If you have your own environment, you're paying for the room, you're paying for the AC, you're paying for the, the engineers, you're buying servers, and then a year and a half later, they're obsolete. You got to buy new servers, you're constantly doing upgrades and um, you know all those expenses, you, you don't have to worry about anymore. You just pay for what you're using. All right, so that's it for this episode. Hit the like button if you like. Smash the subscribe button if you feel so inclined and uh, drop me a comment down below. Uh, or you can reach me on Twitter at CyberSecStudy. Take care.